Hey everybody, looks like we are live. Happy Wednesday. I'm glad everyone made it. We made it to another week. And let me put my pastels away. So I'm so happy you're here. Thanks so much for hanging out on a Wednesday. We are on the next part of the beautiful and talented uh, Kelly McDonald. So I'm looking forward to that. And then I'm going to go ahead and and uh, see who's here and welcome everybody real quick. And let's see. So Dennis Baker, how are you, sir? Good to see you. Is this your first time here? And if it is, I'm so glad you're here. Um, everybody welcome De uh, Dennis. So I'm so glad you're here. Dennis, tell me where you're from. We have Wendy from the Dallas, Texas area. Mike Deloach, all the way from the Atlanta, Georgia area. We have Honey. How are you, Honey? How are you, Mike and Wendy? Honey is from Rockville Center, Long Island. So we have uh, Mr. Paul Tarchula, and he is from the Indiana area. And let's see who else we have uh, so far. Oh, Texas. Okay, so two Texas people so far. That is really fantastic. So glad to hear that. And so that is really neat. And so we are, we're, they, basically we are, are, are breaking down. Uh, we're just gonna, I'm just gonna send out, so an email. So, okay, let me, let me start talking a little bit more uh, coherently. Um, the contest, the October contest for the the grand prize, which is an extreme Patriot Arrow, the customized version by from from me. That's going to be the first prize. What everyone needs to do tonight is to send an email to my email address, which is paintedglyphs at gmail dot com. I'm going to go ahead and put it in the comments. And then what I'm going to do is that will enter you into the contest as far as, uh, you know, people, uh, you know, for you that we have you on the radar and then we'll send you the prospectus of the contest when it's available within the next day or so. So it's very exciting. Look forward to it. So we have more people here. Let's see who we have. We have Kat. How are you, Kat? All the way from California. Great to see you. Raul, how's it going? Jersey guy, just like me. We have Zavi from Arizona. So really great group of people. I think that's everybody. Um, let me see. Did I miss anybody? I don't think I did. Um, and then we have me from New Jersey. Colette, how are you from Wisconsin? Great to see you. So glad you're here. So right now, uh, I have one of the airbrushes that I customized for a customer, and I'll be using it tonight for the detail mixture, and just that's how I do. When you purchase a customized Extreme Patriot Arrow from me, not only do you get an airbrush that can do anything that any $500, $600 airbrush can do, but it is, it is actually... Uh, something that is, uh, you know, tuned up by me and everything is troubleshooted. So you're not going to get a faulty valve or anything like that. When it comes, it's going to work. And that's what you want. I don't care if you have a $600 airbrush, if it arrives broken, then how much fun is that, right? But for me, it's going to work every time you get it. Unless there's some crazy UPS guy who's kicking it around. I don't know, <laughs> but when it leaves my when it leaves my studio, it is in great shape. And Mr. Air Todd, how are you today? Let me go ahead and pull up my Pure Ref. If you don't have Pure Ref, I highly recommend you getting Pure Ref. It is so very important. So let's see. Kelly McDonald is right here. Bring her over, and there we are. And let's see, where am I? Nope, that's not there. Let me see. Hmm. 
I guess the other camera is not on, so you're just going to have to live without seeing me, unfortunately, at least for, <laughs> for the, the evening. I think you all survive. I don't know. So let me go ahead and uh, focus this really well. So what I like to do is, so first thing I want to do is get the parallax. Get the perspective. That looks better. What do you guys think? Yeah, that looks better. Good. Okay, so now what I do is I blow it up. Let's see. Huh. So we go this way. Wow, I'm all the way over here. Okay, so now I can go ahead and focus this. And this is how I know I'm in focus. And now I just zoom out. And now I know I'm perfectly in focus. So that is good. All right, so remember when I start the day, I always have the detail mixture in the airbrush, right? You don't want to start going gangbusters with a medium mixture or a dark mixture. That's just not sound thinking. So as always, I'm going to test my airbrush off to the side. And let's go. And like I said, this is a customer's airbrush. And if it's not good enough for me, it's not good enough for the customer. And that's basically what I do now. So what I want to do is just kind of get reacclimated. I think I'm going to start working on her hair a little bit. So let's go ahead and make that happen. And I have the detail mixture, so it's not allowing me to go too dark, even if I wanted to, which is good. Get my glasses on. So if anyone's not on my mailing list, once again, email me paintingglyphs at gmail.com. You'll be on my mailing list. And there I'm going to actually be uh, sharing some amazing news via email soon. Probably before next week's live stream. So if you want to hear from it first and you're not on my mailing list, make sure you are, okay? That's really very, very important. And again, with the detail mixture, I'm just kind of sculpting the large shapes of her hair. Just like so. Ah, thanks, Mike. Yes, everyone click that like button if you have the opportunity. That would be the coolest. And I appreciate that. And So I've been working on a special project, and that's what I want to share with everybody. And it's going to be very, very exciting. So I'm looking forward to that. Looking forward to sharing that with everybody. We have some exciting things. We have the contest that we're rolling out. And we have this new announcement that I've been working on. New beginnings, you know. Hey, Tone, how you doing? Great to see you out of Queens. How's it going, my friend? Queens, New York in the house.
I am out of ink. Okay. So let's go ahead and put some more detail mixture. What I like to do in the beginning is four drops of detail. One, two, three, four. And then four drops of water because it's best. Because it's a real transparent ink. And it keeps you from going too dark too early, too dark too early, too bad, too sad. So you always want to make sure that in the beginning, even in the beginning of your work day, like right now, uh, this is not the first time I painted today, but it's the first time on this project today. So I am going to go ahead and ease into it with the light mixture, right? You know, so that's really good. Uh, So whenever I get an airbrush and I'm working on it for a customer, they purchase it from me, I work out all the kinks so it works perfectly. You know, if it gets, it's the same standards that I have when I use it. I airbrush sometimes eight, eight hours, ten times, eight hours in a day. And you know what? You know I couldn't stand a bad airbrush. So if... If it's something that I use every day and you purchase it and you have one of these, you're going to have an airbrush that's going to do what you want, when you want it, and it's going to be super reliable, which I think is crucial, right? Reliability. So, as you can see now, I'm working with this customer's airbrush that I put together. And so at the end of the day, I'll have the strengths and weaknesses and I'll fix it. I'm not going to about to adjust an airbrush in front of you guys. That makes for a boring live stream. So I'm definitely not going to do that. So with the, with the detail mixture, it allows me to paint but not get too dark. Oh, cool. Just soak it in, my friend. Definitely. Mr. Roy, how you doing, my friend? Good to see you all the way from New Jersey. Mr. Brad. Brad from Manitoba, Canada. So, got a quite geographically diverse area here, which is fantastic. New Jersey, Canada, New Jersey, California. And by no means am I trying to get the hair perfectly. I'm just trying to get the masses of the hair. That's all. So definitely I want you to take your time when you're working on your projects, right? Uh, so definitely what you want to take away from me is that, you know, there's no points for speed. No one's going to care how fast it's going to be done, you know, and so you just want to make sure that you get all your ducks in a row and stay light until it's time to go darker. That's it. And so right now I'm just setting up for these. See how they are large shapes here? Small shapes are coming, but they come when, you know, pretty much I say they come, you know, and when you say they come. So there's, there's no rush at all. Okay. 
So now that I have an idea of what this airbrush is doing, I'm just going to put this aside, work on it later. There are some things that I will be fixing so that it is perfect when they get it. So I'm going to go back to my old trusted airbrush here. Like I said, I'm not going to bore you and make the adjustments while you're here. I'm going to do that after the live stream and make sure that it flows. Some of the adjustments I may do, uh, I will uh, go ahead and, uh, sh and, and, you know, sharpen that needle to the point where it sticks out even further. I will go ahead and lubricate certain areas, check the needle packing, make sure everything is super smooth all that kind of stuff so that's so important so now going back to my airbrush here when these things are these airbrushes are ca uh, calibrated it's unbelievable and everyone who's purchased my extreme patriot arrow can attest to it you know, the ones that are purchased from me, not from the manufacturer, because there's a lot different airbrush that you get from me than if you get when you just buy it from a store or from USA Airbrush. Mine is really just souped up to do this perfectly. And like you're getting for 149 you are getting an airbrush that will kick the butt of a $500 airbrush. Okay, so you see how everything is kind of slowly. Now, remember, I'm not going to go ahead and start erasing the hair. Why would I not do that? Because we do not want to erase wet areas because when you're working with paper when you when you erase you're going to tear it up if it's wet and that's not a sometimes that's an all the time ah oh, thank you so Paul says that his extreme uh, Patriot Arrow is hard to put down thank you sir I really appreciate that and Paul was so kind to try out the extreme Patriot arrow and what an honor that is and I really appreciate that so now that we have that taken care of now we're going to start putting in some dark accents right what are dark accents you say Dwayne how you doing good to see you how's everything sir really love the work that you shown me Really fantastic stuff. Uh, uh, Dwayne does some amazing color painting. And he also has the Extreme Patriot Arrow customized by myself. And the work he does is just, you know, unreal. So thank you so much. Or real because it's realistic. So what I want to do is I'm going to just, I'm going to just do her hair. So I want just her hair. And I'm going to try and do some of the dark accents in the hair right now. Let's see how this goes. Do do do. Everything covered but the hair. And this is where I'm going to get those uh, dark accents. Because I do not. I don't want any overspray. All this hard work we did, we don't want overspray. There's a no overspray area. So we're going to be moving on over to the the uh, medium mixture. We're going to jump to the medium mixture. That's quite a jump, I know. But that's what we're going to do. Because we're crazy like that. No, actually, no. Because we work so hard, we can go ahead and start putting in our dark accents. It's because we were so hard. 
working so hard and diligent that we are able to do something like this. I also want to uh, do the border here. So I don't want to get overspray on the border. So I'm going to bring this border over here like this. all just keeping things clean right okay really nice so we want to make sure we have some right here so an ounce of prevention goes a long way I use probably around 20 magnets at a time, no more than that, but it's always good to have more, right? And what am I using to cut out? So Mr. Tone, I am using five, uh, four mil uh, acetate. Uh, and the acetate you can purchase is for laser jet printers. So it's pretty cool and it works well. And you can see it's much better than paper because you can see through it and it's much more accurate when we are actually working on our our painting we can see where and line up much better because it's it has that translucency so what I'm gonna what am I going to do is I'm gonna come in with the medium mixture I'm turning up a notch as Everall would say let me go put on the hose very good question there tone thank you sir Okay, here goes nothing, honey. Now I was referring to the commercial, not the honey. So, so yeah, remember that commercial, nothing, honey? That's that uh, cereal, honey. That was fun. Those were fun commercials. Make sure my airbrush. So here I have the Extreme Patriot 105, customized by myself, getting beautiful spray patterns. All right, now we want to put some magnets right close to the edge everywhere, you know. Honey says she never gets away with that. That's funny. Kiva, how are you, my friend? Great to see you. That is such an honor. A wonderful artist, Kiva, is here. What a what a privilege. So you want to know something about Kiva? She gave this to me a long time ago. And she made this for me. And ever since then, this has been my number one. Uh, and you know on my live streams, this is what I use for my freehand shield all the time. And I just want to say thank you so much, Kiva, for that. And always thank you for your friendship and your inspiring artwork and everything. It's such a pleasure. And then we have Patty. How are you, Patty? Great to see you. How's your kitty doing? I believe Romeo, if I'm oh, Rocky. What is your little guy's name? How is he uh, holding up? Sending good thoughts to uh, your kitty. So sorry he's not or she's not feeling well. Air Todd says, you're thinking about getting the chest style magnets. What exactly is that? And then now what we're going to do is we're going to work on the dark accents on this side here. This side, not so much, but we can do a little bit. So let's see, so here. Now you see it wanting to billow up, so we don't want that. So we're going to put this right there, right on that edge. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work on some of these dark accents right here. 
right on this contour. But I'm not doing it willy-nilly. I'm actually looking at my reference. Put that magnet real close. You don't want any billowing. Underspray is the is the coin phrase that I that I use. But you see how I could use this uh, customized uh, shield here to use as this the ability to get those really hard edges against the contour without dirtying things up, right? So let's see if we can have any other dark accents here. See if I missed anything. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Keith is great. She really is. I remember that bedroom that you did for your daughter. It was like a, a rainforest or something like that. That was incredible. Just working on these dark accents here and there. Let's see. Everyone can hear me well. Sound quality is good. And like I said, Rome isn't built in a day. We're just going to take our time. And then we're going to start, since we start some dark accents here, we're going to have to darken up her eyes again with this medium mixture. Okay, look over here. So those who were at the Pastel uh, live stream on Saturday, thanks so much for hanging out. Which that's going really well. I really enjoy that. Thank God. Always thankful to God. Okay, so that's it for the dark accents. And let's go ahead and lift this up and see how good or bad it looks. We'll put some, we'll keep the magnets on uh, borders. First you pick up the small ones with a bigger, uh, bigger magnet. Let's see how good or bad it looks. Dun, dun, dun. All right, some nice dark accents. It's, she's starting to pop as beautiful as she is. She's starting to pop. So now let's go ahead and uh, darken. Hey there, Mr. Willie. Good to see you. How are you, my friend? All the way from Massachusetts. Hey, Brad, thank you so much for the Super Chat sticker. I really appreciate that, sir. That means so much to the channel and to me, it's really amazing. And I just want to say thank you so much for that. Uh, it really is uh, both encouraging and also helps the life of the channel. And I really want to say a big thanks to you. So now we're going to work on her eyes, right? We're going to darken her eyes because she has beautiful dark pupils. And let's make this happen. Dun, dun, dun. The magic of DSLR. We are going to start with her eye on camera left. 
and we are going to practice first, right? We are not going to go straight in like a cowboy. All right, so here we go. See that beautiful how I'm getting even darker with that pupil. I'll let that dry before I go over it again. You have to be careful. And let me zoom in with pure ref. If you don't got pure ref, please get it. One of these days I'm going to do uh, a video on pure ref and uh, just to help out my friends of how great it is. Should I lighten this up a tad? Yes, I should. Okay, now let's go ahead and darken this up right here. A little dark accent. There we go. And where else can we put a dark accent in her pretty face here? Okay, that little area of her nostril. Just like so. And maybe just right here on the edge. Just like that. And on her lips. Let's see what's happening on her lips. I'm going to look at that. I don't need the uh, dark accent there. little lilt there which is cute right there little bit like right there and and then right here quite fascinatingly um, let's see do I do it with an aggressive eraser I think so I just have to find the right one so right here between these two lips although the values are different they kind of lose their their contrast here and this comes over here like this all right, so now we're looking for more dark accents, right? So let me zoom out. And so now I'm seeing a little more strength. And you know we have to work on the hair, of course, but now we're just working on some of the dark accents. There's a beautiful dark accent right under her chin. So I'm going to use the uh, face shield. And we'll get that over here real quick. Why use a freehand shield when you can uh, use a customized freehand shield? Am I right, everybody? Thank you so much, uh, Kiva. I appreciate that. And thank you, Dwayne. That means a lot to me. Mike Deloach, have a great night, my friend. Always a pleasure. And don't work so hard, sir. Well, try not to at least, right? So what I'm doing is I'm putting this shield right here because I want to hit this hard edge right here because there's an accent there, right? So it's all about dark accents today. The dark accents are going to create contrast, which is going to allow us to, to uh, direct the eye, right? And that's what we want to do. So I don't think we'll be done this week, but we will be done next week with this portrait so I still have the media mixture here and let's go ahead let's get ready to rumble
So if I don't want to overspray in this way, so one of the ways that you can you can actually circumvent that is spray this way. If you're spraying this way, there's going to be a lot less overspray because the air and energy is going this way. So see how I come from this side? It's just learning the aerodynamics and the nature of your airbrush. Getting a little ambitious here, so putting a nice uh, hard edge right there. And so let's see, so I'm here, right? And I have the face shield, but I don't really need the face shield here. So let's lift this up and see if we can do some of the darks that are on the camera right side around her temple, right? And I don't think we need any shields for that. But look at that beautiful hard edge we achieved right there. So my job now is to kind of like soften it, right? But we'll get there. We don't want to work on it while it's wet. So we keep it in the back of our mind and we move on. And it's in our back of our mind, we're going to come back to it. So you see now I'm coming with that medium mixture. And now I'm creating a really very interesting... So... You know, a good painting or drawing is a is a story of opposites, right? You have your your lights and your darks, and your hard and your soft, and you have your uh, those kind of you know warring factions within the painting. But having those contrasts is what really is going to give it interest. Like it's a visual interest that we're used to seeing in real life. That's why we respond to it as, as people. A well done painting which has the right values but also has uh, a lot of nice opposites. Hard and soft edges is a big one, right? That's, that's big. If you have all soft edges or all hard edges, it's just gonna look ugly and weird. Oh, thanks, honey. I appreciate that so much. Thank you. And so I don't dare come in here because I don't want to get overspray in that beautiful light area. But right here, we can start working on the space between the zygomatic arch, the zygomatic bone, and the mandible. The mandible is the jaw. The zygomatic bone is the cheekbone. So before you see when I was working with that uh, the detail mixture, now I'm coming in with the hair with this beautiful medium mixture and creating even more volume. get the nature of the hair what are the what's the nature of of Kelly's hair during this photo shoot and that's what we're after and we're not really looking for anything specific we're just looking to gain the character of her hair that's really what's it oh uh, Patty have a great night thank you so much I hope you don't work so hard and uh, it's always great to see you thank you I'm just softening up this edge here. Okay, so now what I can do is I'm going to, I want to get this really beautiful hard edge here. So I do have a blouse 
uh, stencil where I can actually get that hard edge, right? So let's look for that together. Where are you? Let's see. I know it's here somewhere. Yes, so I do find it. So I want to get that edge, and there's no better way to get the edge than this, right? So definitely the way to go. Let me just nail that down. Okay, so now we have that there. Also, I'm gonna, one ounce of prevention is gonna go a long way. I'm going to take this and I'm gonna put this here because it's a little empty space right there. And Tim doesn't want to tempt fate, so I'm just going to protect from overspray. That's all. Best defense is not to be there in the first place. Now we're going to work on this beautiful dark that's right under her sleeve. And now we have the medium mixture to do so. So as always, it's the one second rule that is uh, king. And we're just going to make sure that we get that taken care of. And then right over here is a beautiful dark part edge. Okay, so let's, that's it. That's all we're doing. So now we'll just uh, lift this up. And we'll just see how our hard edge did. So it's all about these dark accents right now. Just creating interest. And then we come back in with the detail mixture. We're going to work a little more on developing texture and form and maybe so look at that beautiful dark we have here doesn't that add nice interest it really does okay so let's see what is the best mode of attack right now let's go in with our aggressive eraser and let's start let's start working out some hair right let's it's about time so this is kind of dry here what I like to do is take an eraser that is sharp and then cut it at a 45 degree angle. And I'll show you what it does. It creates a chisel and it's really very nice. It's a very nice chisel. So here we have this here. And what I'm going to do is just put it on my cutting board and I'm just gonna cut it at a 45 degree angle. And you're gonna see this really nice chisel I have and watch what the chisel does you like it a chisel no see I like it a chisel okay now let's zoom in and watch this with this chisel I can get really really nice harder edges here Now I may, this may be a little bit on the soft side. So let's see with this one. Oh yeah. See that? Now we can really get down to business. This is a much more aggressive eraser. And so we're just going to kind of hit some of these irregular lights here. So right now we're starting to, just starting to really kind of hit some of these individual hairs. Just like so. Try not to have them all go in the same direction like spaghetti. So let's see what we have. Uh, and let's see. So Kiva says she had to do a tribute mural with 14 portraits in the medical center a couple of months ago and ended up just using 
her paintbrush instead of the airbrush because the overspray around medical equipment. Oh, bummer. And she wish she, uh, she wishes that I live closer because I thought I was going to die. <laughs> uh, and overspray is a mess to deal with. Well, you know what it is? It's you have to know the nature of the overspray to combat it, right? And uh, Kiva says, and they kept having her change the body positions like it was such an easy task. <laughs> that sounds crazy. Changing body positions. Oh, my God. And to try and keep them anatomically correct, right? So now I'm just working on creating more re more believable hairs, some of these individual uh, groups of hair. Not so much individual hairs, but individual groups of hair. Yeah, that does sound <laughs> really outrageous. So what I want to do is I'm going to cut this, uh, try and sharpen this. Let's see if this sharpens. And once I sharpen it, I'm going to cut it at that oblique angle. Uh, about 45 degrees. That's not a very good point. Okay, that's probably as best as I'm going to get. And what I'm going to do is bring over my cutting, uh, my little baby cutting mat, and then I'm going to come and cut this at a 45. As long as I, I have to find it to cut it, right? So I wonder what I did with it. I can use this one. No worries. So right now I have this. I'll cut this out of 45. It's very brittle. It's a very old typewriter eraser. But as you can see, these old typewriter erasers work amazingly. So let's take a look. I'll zoom in and show you. So right here you can see like with this kind of oblique angle it almost works like a mechanical pencil doesn't it it's really cool and Kiva says and Rick says looking good Tim I'm in White Horse Yukon to work so so glad to be able to watch you work. Hey, Rick, how you doing? So where is that? Is that in uh, is that in Canada as well, sir? So great to see my Canada friends tonight. My Canadian people, I really high. I hold my Canadian friends in very high esteem. Great country. And you can see how I'm actually developing the lights. So I'm not really looking at individual hairs. There's individ just groups of hairs. And you can see how we start to, and I can come back in with this uh, detail mixture and kind of shape this. So the dark accents in the hair really helps me to develop the hair. Wow. 
Wow, that's really north. And uh, Kiva says, uh, my, my ink mixtures are wonderful. If anyone here hasn't ordered them, please definitely should. Thank you, Kiva. Yes, you were one of the first to try my inks, right, Kiva? Way back when. I appreciate that. And you've done some amazing work with the inks. Now you see here, I'm doing the temporal, uh, this temporal area right here, and I have to make sure that I calm that down. I don't need that to be too powerful. Anyway, it needs to be way over here anyway, so I'll just move this over. There we go. That looks better. Move this, start darkening some areas. And... Oh, thank you so much for testing it out, Dwayne, and that is, that is amazing, and, uh, and, uh, you know, and so the inks, I love you to try, and Willie says he needs to reorder some, and so does Kiva, that's great to hear. I have some really amazing news next week, uh, if you're not on my mailing list, please do so, because I'm really anxious to share I'm busting. I want to share it, but I'm going to wait. It's not anything to do with the contest. It's a personal thing. And I think people are going to love it. And uh, so it's something that, that's been a long time in the making. Long, long time. Okay, so we're going to continue working on the hair. Let's work on this side of the hair. This is a little too rough for the early stages. So like for the large shapes, I think something a little less aggressive is much better for the surface. Just creating some of the lighter hairs against the dark hair. Hey, Brayden, how you doing? Another one of my Canadian friends. How's it going, sir? Always a pleasure. So we got quite a good Canada uh, group today. So that is so exciting. Uh, Dwayne says that his airbrush that he got for me is definitely a pleasure to use. Uh, whipped out a couple of picks like it had, like you had it for ages. That's the thing, right? And I think that's what I love about the customized Extreme Patriot Arrow. It just feels like why use another airbrush? You know, it just it really is a pleasure to use because it does everything we want it to do. But thank you so much for trying it. I mean and purchasing it. I really appreciate that, sir. A great deal. And like I say, it doesn't leave, you know, if you purchase it, you don't get it overnight or anything because before it leaves my studio, it has to be perfect by my standards. And then I feel 100% happy to send it to you because then I know in my heart you have an airbrush that I would be glad to use all day long. Tone says, uh, there's a habit he has to enforce on himself. The way you erase and then paint back and forth like that. Yes, that is so important. You know, that back and forth, you know, that really does. And taking my time, you know, I'm not trying to develop that hair right away. Just bits and pieces, right? Just just working back and forth. I got time. I'm not going anywhere, at least I hope.
And like anything else, you know, you just do the one second rule and you just work from the large shapes to the small. Before you know it, her hair is going to reveal itself. See, we hit those dark accents and now we're going to let it dry, of course, right? We don't want to work in wet hair. That's, that's a no-no because that's just going to damage all the hard work that we did. Yeah, that's one thing that in the airbrush world, it's uh, easy to get stuck in one area. John Augusta Dominiganga said, you must paint the ensemble. You have to make the painting look like it was done in one breath. And how you do that is bring everything up together as I am, right? The whole painting is kind of working itself out. Oh, Braden says patience is something that he's working on in his projects. He keeps wanting to rush to the end of the project, but he needs to break it down into chunks and do them one day at a time. You know, that is so wise, Braden. That's exactly what I've been trying to do, especially on a lot of things that I'm working on. If I look at the whole big thing, I feel daunted and I'm like, oh my God, I just want to lay down. But like you say, if we handle it one day at a time, then it's in bite-sized chunks that we definitely can handle, right? So that's so important. Down here, this sort of large uh, dark mass over here, there's, there's some hairs happening here. So let me make sure we do this. Just bring this down. So I'm not a multitasker by any means, but what I do is I concentrate on on the whole, you know, just just moving around and that helps me and keeps me like really excited about the whole process. Now I just had my razor right here, but for some reason this is not the one. There we go. Okay. All right, back in business. I'm going to sharpen this manually, the old-fashioned way. And then I'm going to try and cut this obliquely again at 60 degrees. It doesn't always work, but we'll see. Because they're so brittle, they're like probably like 40 years old, you know? These, and these typewriter erasers. Okay, great. So see that oblique angle I have right there? Now watch how... Now, it doesn't always work on the surface, but sometimes it does, so. Ah, there we go. Just, her hair is very complex, right? A lot going on, lots of movement. And then we can play around with this one. See how that goes. So hair is quite crazy. 
Now, here's something that you could use, which is Blackbeard Wheat, which is very exciting. So watch this. I want to get this sort of uh, hair structure here, this organic hair structure. And I'm just going to spray through that. And that's going to help me. You don't use it too much. You want to use it sparingly. It doesn't work if you overdo it. But just here and there. So you get just a little bit of that organic movement of hair. Just here and there. Just a little bit. Nothing much. Nothing nothing big. It's if you have like really straight hair, it's much more effective. But that's cool. And Oh, Braden says he was able to get into get into that when he was building instruments. Wow. Came to really appreciate and enjoy part of the process except sanding. Sanding sucks, which is really bad because it's 90% of it. Wow. So so basically, uh, so Braden, uh, you built instruments like musical instruments? That's really amazing. That's so fantastic. And Wendy says she knows it all too well, and it's an effort to regulate herself, maybe the hardest thing. And Wendy says, what am I, what am I, am I doing? So uh, you mean with the, um, uh, with this, the, uh, the, the uh, Blackbeard Wee? See, I'm just starting to really get in there. And let's see, Wendy says the razor. Thought you were going to attack the painting with the razor. Or you said you were looking for it. Yeah, just a razor blade to uh, sharpen these uh, aggressive erasers. So as you see, we're getting close to the end of the painting. Uh, one more day, one more live stream, and we'll be finished. So right now we're walking around, sort of assessing the situation. And I'm not going to stay in the hair too long, but it's good to move around and really get it, get it going. And then we can come back to it. Okay. that movement right there, a little bit right here. And you know what it is, you have to make, make it believable as well, right? So it's one thing to develop the hair, but you, you want to make it believable and you want it to be pretty much the way her hair looks in person. Not that I know what her hair looks in person, but what it looks like when she was taking this photo. I'm gonna do some of little hairs on her scalp. And then let's look at some of the cast shadows here. Actually, it's just little hairs. I 
Now, when you're pumping that trigger and kind of bouncing, you are promoting texture, and that's what you want to do because her skin is textural. And you want to basically understand the skull that you're painting. So if you understand, then you can look for some of these real subtle lights and darks. But if you're not looking for it, you're going to miss it. Or you're going to fake it. But you're not going to get it right. I don't think that it's uh, it's an elective for a portrait painter to know anatomy of the face. I think it's a prerequisite. Okay, so let's go ahead and we're going to model her face again since we made all these dark accents. A lot of other things lightened up. And Kiva says, it's been great chatting with you all. She has to get to this, this paint off of her. She really misses my live streams. Thank you, Kiva. I miss you as well. They're always so informative and fun. Thank you. I appreciate that. Have a great night. And I hope to talk to you again, Kiva. Always a pleasure. Let's go ahead and zoom out. So you can see how her hair is developing. I have the detail mixture in here. And now I'm just going to continue developing uh, some of the subtleties in her skin. Pumping that trigger from a good healthy distance. Okay, me and my students on Friday night, my Friday night lecture, we talked about the anatomy of the nose. That's what we've been working on. And once you know the anatomy of the nose, you look at it differently. You'll never see it the same again. Uh, those who were at my uh, lecture, let me know uh, what you think. Did it really affect the way you see the nose? And let's see here. So right now, there are certain elements of the nose that once you know, you realize when you put the highlight in the wrong spot like that. So now after studying the anatomy of her nose, I can actually know exactly what's happening and why. So now I know what's happening here. This is called the alar cartilage coming over here. And alar means wing. So it's a wing-shaped cartilage that's on the bottom. And then right here, coming out of the uh, nasal eminence, which is this bump over here, is these two bones called the nasal bones. And you see there's no highlights here, hardly anything here, right? And then once we get to right about here, we start seeing a highlight because now it's a, it's a different form, right? It's a whole different form. And that is called the lateral cartilage. And these things are these things are real, you know, these things are 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 real things that you have to see when you are a painter, a portrait painter. Ooh, I almost went in with the Wow, that would have been bad. I was gonna do this fine detail with the medium mixture. That would have been bad. Okay. So now I can see what's happening with this shape of her nose a lot more clearly.
Okay, so let's zoom out and see how that's looking. Just so you can see that the nose is looking a bit better. Her nose. And we just want to continue shaping that nose. Uh, thank you. Willie says her eyes look amazing. Brad says learning the anatomy in class is cutting edge. Thank you, my friend. And uh, Michael, how you doing, Michael McClung? How's everything? I was hoping to care air of the. I was hoping to catch an airbrush artist doing Loretta Lynn. Maybe that's a good idea for the future, there, Mr. McClung. Thank you. That's a great, great uh, uh, suggestion. But this young lady's really fantastic too. So right now we're going to go ahead and we're going to put some white pastel in here. And let's shape her nose a little bit. So you see after looking at what I was working on, I could see that the highlight is much further down her nose in a much lower position. And so I use my needed eraser to shape that. And I keep wanting to put it higher. It's actually lower. So what is my, my fascination with putting it so high? It's way down here. And there's two elements on the tip of her nose. That's why you see two highlights. So they are two forms. And right here on where the alar cartilages are. It's really hitting, the light is really hitting it directly. So you can see that you know, the, the, the cartilages, there's three separate uh, forms that are on the nose. The nasal bones, the lateral cartilage, and then the alar cartilage. And now we can even go further and shape, shape this light really nicely. And then we can, if I zoom in, you can see how I can actually get more subtle. And that's what we want. We want to get a little more subtlety here. So I think a lot of the secrets of the old masters had to do with the knowledge of anatomy. This comes way up here, like this. So before, when I didn't know anatomy and I was looking at a nose and it was a complex shape, I would kind of get lost. Now I can really, really get it, you know, really apply that. And that's a triumph for me and that has to do with my study of anatomy and you could have that too. So right here you're seeing we're having this uh, kind of highlight of the alar of the uh, malar fat excuse me right here next to the orbicularis oculi
And let's see. Uh, uh, la, la, la. Let me see what people are saying. Oh, she passed away the other day. So sorry to hear that. She was great. Coal miner's daughter, right? I remember seeing that when I was a little kid. Uh, so that's something. And you can see right underneath the the uh, lower eyelid where you can start seeing the um, orbicularis oculi right there. So if you steer away from anatomy, anatomy is going to steer away from you. So it's, you know, if you embrace it, uh, it's going to help you in your painting. Just darkening that. Right over here on the corner of the lower eyelid, I went a little too dark. And you see, I'm always, I'm always willing to adjust, always willing to admit that I was wrong. And now I can come in. Remember, the, the adjacent shape often describes the form better than the shape itself. Right here, you see we have the superorbital eminence, which is a bump that's right above the eyebrow on the, on the forehead, which is above the orbit of the eye or the eye socket, and that comes out, and that's why I'm going to go ahead and do that. So if you zoom out, you can see I'm doing a lot of subtlety here and also looking at areas where I can actually de-emphasize, like here on the just above the malar fat composite or compartment so like right here you can see there's going to be more light because there's a bump on everyone's forehead called the superorbital eminence and that same thing is happening here on this side it's on the shadow side so it's not as bright but it's still there come over here and so we're just uh, you know slowly doing this and so we have to make like right here you have the mental protuberance and then on top of that mental protuberance are her muscles and then there's this composite mental fat here so we have to make this turn like a ball here so I'm just going to soften that up And you see by softening that up, it's also, you know, helping to create a better, more pleasing portrait.
and then right over here you can see uh, it's a little let's just lighten up this area here and then what I can do is I can come in with my kneaded eraser and I can kind of form this out here like so there's a lot going on in here with the muscles and and different fat compartments and everything like that so that's everyone has them everyone everyone it's part of you know there's uh, fat compartments that we have but some are really important structurally and in the face they're mostly important structurally so right here this kind of softens up as it comes down I'm really much more happy with her nose now and that's good that's after our study on Friday of the anatomical structure of the nose okay what I'm seeing is on the nose there is a reflected light so let's see if we can take care of that that's really gonna help uh, you know so I see here if I look close there is this tiny little bit of reflected light right here see that right there and then right over here so I'm gonna going to zoom in so this is like a real deep dive into into painting a portrait it really is and uh, so it really will help you you know that you're seeing this I'm just pumping that trigger and getting that softness okay so let's see if we can move around let's see where where are we ignoring things i'm just going to go put the kettle on i'll be right back talks amongst yourselves I've always been a science guy you know always interested in science and why things are and everything like that and now it's really coming together my science life and my painting life starting working with with anatomy and really getting deep into you know fat compartments and tendons and nerves and all of that I mean it's really pretty wild let me see here so there's a lot more going on in this nostril here this shadow a lot more light that's in that shadow see it's not just oh man Paul thank you my friend I really appreciate that that is so fantastic Paul with the super chat sticker always appreciate you my Indiana friend <laughs> so so cool it really helps the channel and it pushes me and encourages me and thank you so much sir that is fantastic thank you Michael says uh, Michael McClung says what synthetic paper is good to do the artwork on I don't use synthetic paper I'm not saying anything against it but I like working on you know regular like Canson paper this paper is uh, really cool it's by it's color line paper by Canson and it works really well if you're in England or the UK I recommend uh, De La Rowney's uh, Gunmetal and also their Dreadnought Gray 
I usually work in paper that's 180 pounds or more. Otherwise, it's too thin for the techniques that I use. And I also like working on wood treated with marble dust and gesso. So, and so I have a lot of preferences. But I'm not going to, you know, and I know a lot of people do great work on synthetic paper. I just don't like it. And let's see here, we'll just zoom out. So I'm, I'm really happy with the way things are going and I'm just going to take it easy and just keep moving around. So we were looking at the uh, underplane or the cast shadow of her nose. And let's look in there and I could see that there's more going on than just one value. There's light kind of bouncing all over the place in here. So I'm just going to indicate that. And you can hardly see it, but the philtrum is just making itself known just like that. And now that we have the white pastel, let's go ahead and do the highlight that's right on the edge of the cupid's bow here. Okay, right in here, it's a little bit lighter. Now I have an opportunity with the detail mixture to go ahead and get the, uh, the dimension of her lip there. start doing some of those wrinkles in her or striations in her lip. Well, you know, it's all about what look you want. And uh, so the reason why I picked this paper is because of the traditional look that I want and how it reacts to the ink. It just is much better. Really has that old master look that I'm always after. I'll just re reinforce some of these little striations here. Just like so. Now I can come in with the Fonz and Porter. And the Fonz and Porter is great because it has a 1.0.8 uh, kind of uh, what I'm going to do is just kind of hit those highlights. Whenever you have a dark, there's a corresponding light. And remember, you want to, you always want to make sure that you're not making anything equidistant and the same size, especially here. That's going to be really key. Otherwise, she's going to look contrived and you don't want that. can see there's much more of the top of her lip showing. Just make that happen. See where you have those highlights is really going to either describe the forms correctly or incorrectly. That's up to you.
the lip actually sits on a platform of skin. If you notice, it's not the lip that goes all the way down. So that's very interesting. It's just like anything else, you know, it's how you've been trained. I was trained on working on regular paper my whole life and seeing the pros and cons of it. And that's why I like working on regular fine art paper. Now I'm starting to see some of the subtleties in these shapes here. I'm just going to rub this in here. Wow, not a nice, uh, nice group of people here. Good turnout. Okay, right here in the upper eyelid, it gets darker over here. And that's way too dark. Remember I did that dark accent? That was not exactly what's happening over here. There we go. That looks better. It looks very indicative to how she looks. Dennis, thank you so much for hanging out. I really appreciate it. Hope to see you again soon. Take care, my friend. Always a pleasure. going to use my pastel pencil that's a really bright light right there and I'm just going to kind of intensify that just a little bit nothing too crazy oh cool Todd that's cool Yeah, you know, it's Drew's method is amazing. And so I I appreciate that. My method's just different, that's all. Not better, not worse. Okay, let's zoom out. Okay, so little by little things are starting to come together. We're just working on the three-dimensional uh, forms what's facing the light what's facing away from the light you know what's getting brighter what's getting darker all that fun stuff okay I'm gonna go check on my tea in just one moment Okay, I'll be right back, guys. Let's see.
Thank you everybody for waiting. I'm just having some tea with milk here. And that's nice and relaxing after a long busy day. Doing all kinds of art stuff, right? And so you can see she's she's coming along. So thank you so much. And uh, so let me get my glasses on and let's continue moving on. So what are we ignoring, right? So I think if I have to say, if Tim is ignoring anything, I'm ignoring her blouse. So let's go ahead and work on her blouse a little bit. Maybe work on some darker areas. Some lighter areas here. Just to give the, the blouse some attention, right? That's all. You have to give attention to all different areas. So those are here. Don't forget, I do a live stream with doing portrait. Uh, in pastel every Saturday night at 8 o'clock so that's a lot of fun it's a great compliment to this to see how I work in color and let's see Wendy has to give her cat two different medications oh man poor baby uh, oh Wendy's tired okay definitely I understand uh, Dwayne says his style is completely 180 from from mine, which is why he liked learning from. Oh, thank you, and I love your stuff, Dwayne. Dwayne showed me some of his paintings the other day. Wow, home run, really nice, really great stuff. I'm just going to work on the inside of the collar here. Just give more attention to the blouse. Because if you don't give enough attention, it's going to look out of place. So you definitely want to work this up a bit. And just do the one second rule, paint what you see, it'll come out. And just with that one second rule, you're really paying attention. But you also want to feel the form. You want to feel her body underneath, right? So that's why it's important to really pay attention and to feel her form underneath her, her blouse here. See, just by paying attention to her blouse, she comes alive even more, right? Hey, Nameless, how you doing? Just thinking about you. How are you, my friend? Thank God that these are, uh, these are uh, recorded so you can watch them later. And Dwayne says he'll be doing a Harley tank next. Wow, that's going to be great. I can't wait to see how that comes out. And, uh, oh, Dwayne says the ones he showed me a couple of quickies he did with the brush he got, so the customized, extreme, the customized Extreme Patriot Arrow. Those are fantastic that you did them no fit that fast. Makes it even more impressive.
Okay, so I'm just gonna keep moving here. There's some shape right here. I'm gonna put that there. And then there's a form here and a form there. Ooh, so I do see a, a shadow that is that in the oh yep that needs to be fixed so I'm gonna take my white pastel and I'm just gonna fix this area right here let's see where her maller maller fat is right here kind of even this out there that looks much prettier Don't get hung up on making it look like her. That's not what you want. She's going to look like herself at the end. It's going to come out uh, perfectly. So you're not really looking or concerned with any kind of likeness at this point. Especially when you're doing a live stream. You know, you might want to make it look good for your audience and everything like that but don't get hung up on that you don't want to worry about whether it looks good just follow the process Right here on the side, this comes up here. There, so now you can see I'm just softening things up here. Even over here. Hey, my guest, how you doing? Great to see you, my friend. How you been? Wendy says coffee cake is good. Yes, good thing. Definitely, Michael. Good thing that it isn't checkered. That would make me cry. That would be a lot of work. Very true. I did a scarf of David Bowie years ago, and that was like, the bane of my existence. We're getting there, everybody. And now, since we're here with the, uh, we're working on the hair, let's come in with this over here with our Fonz and Porter, and let's, let's lightly do some of the lighter hairs over here. Just a few. 
just start to you know kind of get a little more a little more subtle just like so and let's see what I miss yes that's a piece of sandpaper Michael so what I do is I take my white pastel and I kind of extract the sandpaper from there and then I use my stump and use the stump as a uh, type of uh, paintbrush and that's how I apply the white pastel It is 11.23. We're getting close to the end of our live stream. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out with me. I'm going to give you always the full two hours, as you know, I always try to. It's much lighter here, and that made a difference. And now I can just kind of keep, you know, keep trying to refine this area, and you'll get it. And now I'm going to come back in here. Kind of do some of these light hairs. Next week should be the culmination of her portrait, the beautiful Kelly McDonald. You can also come in and do some of the negative spaces in the hair. So the fonts in Porter works really well. You want to save this for the brightest highlights here and there. You don't want to go too crazy. You want to be very selective. As you can see, just keep moving around. And then you want to make sure that you get this area where the zygomatic arch kind of comes down here. Not the zygomatic arch, but the zygomatic bone. Psychomatic arch is back there by the ear. And this kind of dark does not go all the way down, kind of stops right here. Make that happen like so. Kind of pull this over. And then this kind of cuts in like that and then we can kind of do the right here where the light is kind of hitting the mental protuberance and the mental fat compartment right here and then we come back in with the detail mixture and kind of just shape that a little bit And then just also shape this right here. There's a lot more light in here. And then right here seems to be a little bit of light. It kind of connects right here kind of goes down so next week gonna be a real big announcement uh, so get ready for it I think a lot of people will be very excited about it and let's see oh Colette says she's absolutely gorgeous thank you so much that's wonderful uh, so very cool and let's see very very cool so 
Nameless says, Mike, speaking of vehicles, I found a portable scanner today uh, on the street. Turns out those things are around three grand. Wow, that's cool. And so that's very neat. Okay, so we are at 1128. We're getting close to the to the conclusion. Yeah, a little bit of a back pain, but I did okay. So now I could really sculpt the light. I'll tell you, it's a pleasure painting uh, Miss McDonald. She's very beautiful. And let's see, uh, Zavi, uh, thank you so much. I appreciate that, my friend. Zavi says it looks fantastic. Air Todd, take care. Always a pleasure. And Mike S. says he's looking at a Q160. That's pretty cool. And Wendy says she looks amazing. Thank you, Wendy. I appreciate that. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, it's always great to see you, Mike. Hopefully... Uh, we get to spend more time together next week if you get the chance. I know uh, everyone who takes the time to come visit me, uh, Mike, I appreciate it. I appreciate you and, uh, and I appreciate all the people who are new today. Thank you, Dwayne. I appreciate that, my friend. I really appreciate it. So when we come back, we're going to work on the hair a little bit more. We are going to kind of resolve her dress and just kind of, uh, you know, dot the I's and, and cross the T's, so to speak. And we're going to be in good shape. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Brad, for the super chats. I really appreciate that. You all great. Michael McClung, Mike Guest, Wendy, Dwayne, Brad, uh, Zavi, Air Todd, uh, Mr. Mike Deloach, Kiva, I mean, Colette, Honey. Paul, Paul, thank you so much for that super chat. I really appreciate that. That is absolutely amazing. And so here we are. And uh, we are done. And everyone, thank you. Mike, Mike McClung says, great job. I appreciate that, sir, very much. I'm looking forward to sharing everything with you next week. And watching all the used portraits make me, oh, if it make you want to do it, that's great. Guys, take care of yourselves and girls. You're all amazing. And I'm so thankful and happy to spend Wednesday night and taking your time out of your busy schedule. That's precious. Kat, thank you so much. Great to see you. You all are amazing. Bye, everybody. Take care.